Welcome back. Thanks for sticking around with me up until video four, importing and loading assets in Katana. So this is where I start building a new Katana graph, um, bringing in the data for the shot. So Katana supports bringing in data in many ways. Uh, we can use scene XML, which is a way you can script up in uh, Python in uh, Maya or similar programs where you can grab a complex scene and export out all the data with an XML file that contains all their transform information, placement in the scene, any custom attributes and all that sort of stuff and we can read that back in. There's a scene graph XML node um, so a lot of big facilities will use custom Maya exporters and those so be aware that's around. Um, the other formats they use are Alembic, of course, uh, which I'll be using today. So I'm going to create an Alembic. Um, there's also um, some support for Pixar's USD, which is fairly new. I haven't had a chance to play with that one yet, unfortunately. But uh, some studios I, I visit as well have their own proprietary formats and nodes that they use as well. They can bring in all sorts of data for the shot. Um, so yeah, people are doing some very, very cool stuff with Katana in the big studios. But for today we're just going to use Alembic because they're quite accessible for, for everybody. So um, we're going to use Alembic for our geometry and our cached, any cached animation we might have on the, the creature work perhaps. Um, and for textures later on I'll be using RenderMan TEX files. So uh, that's converted from files from ZBrush and Mari. I've got EXR and TIFF files but I'm using txmake.exe uh, which converts them over to random man format. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is the Alembic. Alembic in it's called. So tab AL we'll get that one and create one of those and uh, we can press E to edit because we're not editing at the moment. At the moment I'm viewing the merge node um, down here. I just created one to connect our scene to once we bring our nodes in that we need. So I'm going to press E while hovering over that node. And so an Alembic in node is a very easy one. It just asks a few questions. Uh, what asset do we want to bring in? So I'll just browse to my asset. I've got an ABC folder here that I can bring in. And I need character V2. I'll bring it in that first. And I'm going to name the Alembic first. Character underscore in. So don't be afraid to, to rename the nodes. It, 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 some people uh, don't want to do this because it, it doesn't say Alembic in anywhere or you don't know what type of node it is, but it always says here what it is, so that's fine. I like to name things more based on what I'm doing with it, um, but yeah, you'll, you'll have your own rules there. Um, so if we, you'll see now in the scene graph we have root, so it knows there's something in the scene, but there's nothing under root, so there's nothing we can see. We need to view that node. I'm going to press V. So now you'll see, I can tab the scene graph down, and I have root, world, geo, assess, grub, grub shape. There we go. And he's in there, I can check he's all okay. Um, but the, uh, that's gone in a folder location that I don't really like. So I can specify um, where I want the data to land in the scene. So this is reading the Alembic file specified, but only from this location downwards. So this is our, our structure that, that's come from our 3D application. Um, but here, so if I want it in root world geo, but I want a folder called characters. So you'll see there it rearranges it. I can no longer see it because the character view is not uh, expanded. But we do get a bounding box, which is sometimes all you need to light a shot. Bounding box that just to know the, the object is there. Okay, so I'm going to click on my out cable and connect that into my merge node. The third way to work um, with Alembic files is another node called the Importomatic. So the Importomatic node is not exclusive to Alembics. Uh, it's designed to put many different Alembics into. So we can have one Importomatic node with lots of data for the whole scene. Um, so I can press Edit on the Importomatic, come over to the plus symbol here, and you'll see I've got Alembic, Casting Sheet, 
uh, scene graph XML, um, different types of outputs so we can send them different directions. But I'll just go add a Lembic and that asks me which one would I like to add environment. And once again, we can choose where we want it to go. So I could go um, root world geo. Um, I could make an environment scene here to keep it separate from the characters or leave it as is. So when you're also working with Alembic in either nodes, there's a few other things we need to select here. The frames per second. So if we've got animation cached inside the Alembic, how fast does that play back? And we've also got add to camera lists. I'm gonna leave that to no for my character node but I do actually have cameras in my environment scene. I embedded a couple in there. So if I go yes, it, um, it'll add the cameras as well. I can't see them at the moment because we haven't connected it up. So if I come here and connect it in, but then I view and edit this node, I didn't need to edit it, sorry, just view it. Uh, you'll see now I've got the uh, environment there. but I don't have the cameras. I believe they're in separate nodes. Give me one second. Okay, apologies there. My cameras are actually in separate Alembic files that I can bring in. Um, I'll do that separately. Um, but uh, yeah, we can, we could slot the cameras into here, into the importomatic, adding extra Alembics. Um, but what I've done over in my, my master scene here is uh, I've got a separate camera section um, where we've got three separate different camera moves coming in or camera shots and they go into a variable switch node that we're going to be looking at later on in the graph state variables video. Uh, so if you're looking for that you can jump ahead to that video but stick with me otherwise. So a little bit more about how the scene graph works and how it loads. So when we have an Alembic in our graph we see some of the part of the scene graph but we can't see anything in the viewport. So that's part of the deferred loading and there's a reason why if we double click on a node it's going to expand out and load everything underneath that tree. If we double click again it will collapse it. So you have to be very careful with that node. If I was to double click on root here it would actually load the whole forest up, every polygon into the viewer and have me loading for quite some time they do actually give an option to punch out this spinny wheel here. If we click on it, it goes red and Katana takes on the job of cancelling that operation. So if you're, you're uh, working on the Avengers 7 and you double click and try and load all of New York accidentally, it's not just gonna instantly crash your machine. Well, it might, but it's, it's, you hit the X and it's gonna attempt to, to stop loading all that information. So, for this scene, I've created low resolution proxy geometry to work with. So what I can do with that, if I come to not my character folder, my environments, you'll see I have a folder here called proxy underscore geo. So if I double click on that one, you'll see very quickly a scene loads. It's a low resolution version of my scene. I've just made some very basic geometry to represent the high poly forest. So, so this helps a lot not having to load up the scene of course and it didn't take that long to make. Uh, but there's a few things we need to do. So I want to be able to visualize the proxy in the viewport and access the high resolution versions only when needed. But I also need to have it so we don't render this low res proxy geometry. I need a, to flag this as, as not renderable. So that's something I'll need to do as well in a second. Um, I'm gonna need two nodes to, to get this all set up. I'm gonna need a visibility assign node. Visibility assign, just place that here. And I'm also gonna need some bookmark pins. Um, we'll do that in a second. So I'm going to call this hide proxy geo. Because we're going to use it for that. Undo that, sorry. Edit that node. Hide proxy geo. And connect that in. So 
the next step is to get the parent of the proxy scene so this one here proxy geo and I'm going to middle mouse drag this over onto here where it says add statements and let go that adds proxy geo folder to uh, this area here called CEL that we're going to go into depth with in a little bit uh, but that's like a selection for now um, so it knows that this node is referring to this part of the graph and if I go visible zero now note that it doesn't make it invisible here the visibility assigned node just makes it invisible in the render so now from this point onwards in the the data we will not render our proxy so the next part is to create our visibility pins double clicking on the proxy geo folder we'll collapse it or double click will expand it just to make sure I've got it all in the scene and just to hammer home that if we bring this up it disappears again so the idea with the visibility pins is we want this behavior like we want to be able to see it we want to be able to see it in the viewport but we don't want to have to be scrolling past it all day in our scene graph we want to be able to tuck that away and still see it in the viewport so to have it stay there that's where we use visibility pins so we right click on here and go pin pin visible leaves and you'll see you'll get little little uh, pins in blue that come up on all objects that are visible we can then tab it back up and it stays so that's uh, that's all we need to do but one of the problems with this now just to jump ahead a little bit if we if we were to save close this down come back tomorrow our pins would be gone so there's a little feature to, to retain the pins. It's a bookmark feature of the scene graph, which is used for lots of things, but I mainly just use it for, for uh, visibility pins. So if I go create bookmark, um, and I'll just call this um, tutorial viz, or whatever, and uh, this is what it's gonna save. So you can save pins here in scene graph pinning, but it's also going to save other attributes in the scene graph that we'll, we'll touch on a lot of these as we are uh, as we go through other the shoots we'll just stick to visibility for now and I hit save so now um, if I was to say I don't know clear those pins right click pins clear pins and then come back to this bookmark button I can hit tutorial viz and it should come back to where it was yeah cool so so now we've got the environment coming in, which we didn't name. Um, so we've got our environment coming in and our character coming in. We've got our um, hide proxy geo node working. And so we've got a good chunk of our scene imported in. We still need to do cameras and things like that. Um, but that's what we do to bring in geometry into Katana. Um, if that felt like a lot of setup to bring in an alembic and set up a vis visibility layer, it does get quicker as you do it. But consider that we could neaten this up a bit, um, make sure our backdrops are what we want, save this as a template and like never have to do it again. Uh, like I showed before with my PR man template button in the last videos. Um, you can just yeah set up, set up templates with this stuff and only have to do it once. So. Uh, that's a big part of having Katana work well, uh, is, is having templates, having rules, and solid naming. So I'll finish up the video talking a bit about that. So your templates are, can be really, really good. You can automate shots, you can bring things in, it can work really well, but that's assuming your naming conventions are solid. So if that's still sloppy in your work, or you haven't established standard folder structure and naming in your studio or your setup, you'll need to fix that before getting too deep with Katana because many of the nodes and workflows involve rules based on the naming. Okay, so just to, just on backdrop and cleaning up a little because as I go through each uh, chunk I like to arrange it and make sure it's right, um, fin often finishing in a merge node and uh, given a color and naming that. So I'll just show you how you create a backdrop tab back you can just create a backdrop node like so but what we can also do I'll just delete this one we can just select the nodes and go edit fit backdrop node to selected nodes so that wraps a backdrop node around what we're doing so just a little speed up uh, then I can double click give it a name 
scene in. I like to call it scene in, but that's just my thing. You can call it whatever. Um, you can choose a color. Uh, I come here to font scale. I'm going to go three. And I always click in the viewport after hitting three. There's a little bug now that uh, if you just hit like one and OK, it doesn't save. So you need to actually click outside the box. Just a tiny little bug we've got at the moment. Um, and we also need to choose if we're going to show the backdrop in bookmarks. So I'll show you what that is. If you tap J, the jump hop key, it shows all the bookmarks in the scene. I have a lot because I'm working off to the left of the scene we looked at before, which is fine to do in Katana. We can jump around. Um, but yeah, if I hit object settings, it zooms on in materials. I can work on materials, J. Back to rendering, J. Uh, let's go over to scene in. Cool. So that's backdrops, cleaning up, and jumping around those bookmarks. So thanks for watching, uh, importing and loading assets video. Stick around for the next one. We'll be creating material networks in Katana.